This is Doug Warnberg and welcome back to another set of tips and tricks. And today I'm here in the Man Cave studio and I'm going to teach you a little bit about 2D sonar. And we're going to use this Rigid Industries light up here, LED light that I've got, to signify the 2D sonar beam, much like the last video I just did on 2D sonar coverage area. But today we're going to take it another step forward. This is going to be kind of an advanced 2D class. And we're going to talk about why fish arch. I get this question all the time. I don't see arches on my screen. Well, maybe sometimes you don't want to see an arch. Or you don't understand why a fish arch. And today we're going to use our little bass toy here. And we're going to use our sonar beam. And if a fish swims through that sonar beam, we see him lit up. We're going to learn why fish arch and some reasons why they don't arch and what, how you can interpret that to make you a better fisherman. So we've got our scratch pad over here with our 2D sonar beam. We understand that the beam up here is going to be narrower than the beam down here. The beam at the, where it hits the bottom is going to be our widest point. This was 200 kilohertz would be a 20 degree cone. This just happens to be a 20 degree driving light from Rigid Industries. So it's going to kind of represent our cone area like our sonar beam is. So 20 degree beam light, 20 degree sonar area. And we talked about earlier, basically sonar is creating a sound field just like a light is creating a light field. So uh, if this fish came in and started here, the point from that light to here is going to be farther than if he's dread under the center light. Remember from class, the uh, closest point is a straight line. This is angled, so it's going to be a little bit more. And I'll show you that in another segment. But as that fish starts entering this beam, we're going to start seeing that fish start being drawn here. Just like it's Entering here, we're seeing the nose is starting to be represented here. As it starts moving farther in, that beam starts moving up because it's closer. When that fish is dead under the beam, he's going to be at the highest point here. Right under here is going to be the highest point. We're going to see that heart shape start forming. As that fish, if he moves steadily at the same distance, depth-wise in the water, he's going to start exiting. The head's going to leave and the tail is going to be represented. So that fish is actually going to start creating a downward movement because he stayed at the same depth all the way through, but the distance from the outside of our beams is farther, so it creates a arch shape. That is kind of one thing that happens. This was showing a boat being stationary, the sonar being stationary as the fish moves through. Now what happens if the boat's moving and the fish is sitting here? Basically that light beam is going to travel across it, that fish is stationary. An arch fish is, if you're moving, an arch fish means he's stationary and he's not moving the boat did the movement. If you're stationary, the fish swims through, the fish is moving, so you can kind of start learning about the, the habitat, the habits of the fish. What's he doing right now? If you're stationary, the fish swims through, that's an active fish. But if you're stationary, and this fish is stationary, what's it going to do to our graph? If you're staying in the exact same spot, and because our graph is constantly updating, pinging that sonar every time. If it keeps pinging the same spot, what's it going to do? Think about it. That fish is going to be a straight line from side to side. And actually, we're drawing left to right, but our graph is going to hit here and it's going to draw basically from the right-hand edge of our graph that we're looking at it to the left-hand side. But if a fish is stationary, it's just going to draw a straight line if, the, if, the, if it stays in the sound wave. 
Now let's say our boat is moving and our fish is swimming along at the same speed as our boat's moving here. What's it going to do? Same effect. It's going to draw a straight line. So, we're going to flip our chart here real quick. Fish go over there and join the onyx boxes. We're going to talk a little bit about distance. Distance from the cone angle from here straight down is going to be the same distance as here, but it's not going to go as far. That is why we can develop arches on our fish finder. So I've measured from here straight down to the first line is one foot, 12 inches. I've moved down to the second one is 20 inches. You can see that it curves up a little bit more. I'll just grab this and move it forward. You can see that the 12 inch line is concave, same way as the 20 inch line is concave. You can see a little more curvature here because this is a close distance. Think of the light in the sonar beam as it goes out 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 foot. However deep you're fishing, that line out on the edge is going the dis the same distance is going to be higher. So if that fish starts moving in, so if that fish starts moving in at 12 at at the same depth here, I've got a light line and you can maybe see it here. If that fish moves in on that line, he's going to be farther away. That distance is going to be farther than 12 inches straight here. This point and this point, as far as time that the sonar takes to reach that spot, because that's all sonar knows is time. It knows how long that frequency left till it comes back. So at that point and this point, there's farther distance than straight below it. That allows us to start creating that basically arch shape. Now, there's things that get that come into play as far as chart speed, boat speed, how fast the fish is swimming, and it can change the way a fish looks. If you go over a fish real fast, it's going to have a sharper arch than its, than its slow speed. Slow speed is going to be an elongated arch. Quick, you know, if you're going real fast, boom, you could get a nice crisp, crisp hook signal. Now one other thing I want to discuss is where that fish is in the cone angle, you can determine by our color sonar systems, like the Onyx uh, system that I'm running right now, the farther that, far that more intense part of the beam is going to be directly under the boat. The most intense part of that sonar beam is going to be straight down the middle. And if you look at original color palette in Hummingbird, and that's the one that I like to use because of this, this exact reason. The next color is going to be orange. It's going to be a little bit outside of that. You're going to have your orange colors out here. Basically under here. Then your yellow is going to be your next hardest. So we're going to put our yellow color out here. Our yellow color there. Then we're going to have our greens. This is going to be our next color wave. And blue is going to be the outside edge in original color palette. Now what did this just do? It made a pretty good looking Christmas tree. But what it does is it tells of our strength of our return. Our strongest returns are always going to be directly under the boat in red. This is going to be our area, the strongest return. Where that signal's hitting that fish, and bam, it's coming back up good and strong. Where if it's hitting out here on the edge, it's going to be hitting, it's not going to create a stronger return as dead under that sonar beam. 
So what that does in color sonar, you will see the, the art start blue, then you'll see it transition into green as that fish gets underneath, that fish is moving in. Then you're going to see them go to yellow. You'll see them go to yellow. You'll see them go to orange. And at the top, when he's dead under the center of that transducer, he's going to be bright red. And it's, you're going to see the reverse effect. A fish that is dead under the sonar, the arch is going to be red when he's in the most intense part of the sonar beam. As he leaves, he's going to go orange. He's starting to move away. He's not as strong as return. We're still getting a, a, a strong return, but not a real strong return. Then as he leaves that area, he's going to be yellow. And then when he gets farther away from that transducer, we're not going to get as good a strong return off him, so we're going to get green again. Then we're going to get blue as he leaves. So you're, as that fish is coming through that beam, blue, he's starting to get more sound waves, so he's creating a stronger signal. And when he's dead under there, we're getting a strong, strong signal from him. That's at the point we get our strong red color. If you're vertical fishing and you see that red, we call it going red. That means you can drop your bait down there and you're pretty much dead on that fish.